Now you can see that there are some clear differences and overlaps in the experience, which leads to the question, when would a channel use a threaded layout? The best use is when a team wants a channel for conversations that are more focused on what's current than the past conversations earlier in the channel. The back and forth nature of the messages in the channel is great for conversation on big topics and the purpose of the channel. The group chat conversation style fits this really well. It's why many organizations hold most of their conversations in group chats, but they lack the proper threading. When multiple topics were beginning to be discussed in these group chats, it quickly became difficult to follow. Threaded channels will offer a fluid style of group chat with the ability to have threads that focus on topics or respond to a message to keep it together. Some scenarios where threaded channels might work quite well are if you're a support team and you want to be quick and responsive to conversations supporting an important service. You might be an events team responding and reacting to conversations while delivering an event. So the most important focus is the here and now and the upcoming activities that you're preparing for. You might also be a team that just prefers the group chat back and forth format, that using it in the team channel offers extended benefits that uh, will centralize things like shared file management and more control over membership and a wider range of applications and integration. That, that would be a, a benefit well over above just a group chat. So if you like that group chat format, threaded channels is for you. Some other considerations. Using threaded layouts in a new channel is the easiest way to try it. Today, Microsoft have made it the default choice when creating a new channel, but that might change, and I, I think it should. A team owner should talk to their team about using the threaded layout. Discuss why and how you plan to use it with them. They should develop their own way of working and etiquette when using it. It might be that the team decides to use it like a group chat and only reply to messages to create a thread when they might normally have used the quote post. Some teams might continue to use the optional subject for new messages. And if you are going to do that, then you might as well stick with the channel post layout. As mentioned earlier, subjects and threaded channels can be used sparingly. The team can decide on what they might want to use that subject for, so it signifies a certain type of post and gets attention. If you're considering changing the format from posts to threaded on an existing channel, I recommend trying it on a non-critical channel first. One approach is to change a channel to the threaded channel format during a team's meeting. If you are in that meeting together and using it in that experience, you might discover certain things and get some feedback about how it might fit in your team. So try this. Choose a channel with a clear purpose, not the general channel or its equivalent, if it's using a different name. I chose the first floor channel to begin with. Now the clear purpose of the channel, the channel name, is the topic of the channel. And during the meeting, emphasize the topic of the channel and ask the team members to add a message on that topic. So I'll change this to the threaded format. And during the meeting, I'll invite the team members to come in here and start to add new messages to the conversation. Let them try it out for a few minutes. Some team members might start to reply by adding a new message at the bottom. And that's fine. Let's talk about that. Why would you do that? Was the message in reply to another message? Was it a new message in service of the big topic that the channel is for? Your next step during the meeting while you're trying this out, try replying to a message and starting a thread. Deliberately guide them towards replying to a conversation. 
Again, encourage them to use personal mentions within the reply. At Matt, how are you finding this threaded format? Help them to discover the value of replying in a thread. And lastly, show your team where to find the followed threads feed and the threads panel within the channel. Show them how to unfollow a thread so that they can stop those notifications. Finish by discussing which channels and scenarios might benefit from the threaded format. Decide on a channel to try it with or create a new channel and try it for a period of time. Discuss the feedback in the channel. You might as well use it. It's worth trying these exercises even for 20 minutes during a team meeting to discover if the threaded format works well for your team and in certain channels and scenarios. This video was definitely a longer one. It introduced us to the threaded channel conversation format. I tried to draw your attention to some of the best bits and features to get you up to speed quickly. And then we looked at the section on comparing group chats, threaded channels and channel posts, showing some of the similarities that overlap and the differences. I encourage you to try this with your team and to use those guided exercises I mentioned earlier. It will be an interesting meeting and a good way to figure out what works for you. Let me know how you got on in the comments below. And for now, catch you later.